No, well, did you hear the one with um? <laughs> this this just tells you the world's gone mad. That that one um, um, women t- to be in the SAS, and yeah. th- they've had women try out for the commandos, and mm. none of them have made made it through. So the what are they going to do? Lower the lower the training down so they can get in. And 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 for overseas viewers, what's happened is the um, our elite special forces. Um, there's been claims made under and, investigation. Yeah, they're yeah. under investigation. Um, you know, the, obviously, which I think's a load of shit. Like, look, in war, sad because they're saying yeah they killed innocent people or even terrorists. They had as hostages, not hostages, but they had them captive. They even shot some of them. It's like it's war. Yeah, sadly, it happens. You know, people get that war mentality and whatever. Then they're like, oh, they shot women and children too. And I like I spoke to people that were over there and they said, Lee, it's not like the old days where if the Australians and the Americans went to war with the Germans, well the Germans got a uniform on and know he's a enemy. Yeah, yeah. Now it's like women, children, anyone, families. I say I was talking to one guy where he goes, Yeah, I still have nightmares about this. He goes, We had to blow up a car. It's like the car's coming to the checkpoint, we t- repeatedly tell them to stop, we repeatedly tell them to stop, they're coming closer and closer. He goes, and if I've got, like, if I'm the head here, I say I'm in charge of this border, yeah. and it's me and eight of my other fellow soldiers, yeah. it's us or them. If there's a car of a mother and father, two kids yeah. coming to us and not obeying the warnings, and they're getting closer and closer, I've only got a split second, okay, we shoot them. Yeah. They shoot them, and he goes, Lee, when we checked the car out, there was explosives in the car. Now, if I had it been like, hey, come on, guys, it's a family, we can't do this, let them come close, and they get close and... <laughs> your whole fucking team's wiped out, then what? Because these people don't care, so yes, you can't, like, the people that sit back and try and second guess, yeah, I'm sure there's stuff that's going on, and there are going to be people too where, sadly, people who do go to war, they might not have it mentally tough, and say you've gone back tour after tour, and you've survived each time, lucky misses, but say when you go back, you're with a new group of guys, and every time you make friends, they get killed or blown up, and you see it, and you see it. So your mentality is like, fucking hell, hate these, can't, you know, hate them. So then when you do finally capture someone and he's like being a ha ha talking shit, you know, and rubbing in like, like sledging they do in sporting matches. Imagine he's talking shit about, ha ha, I'm glad I killed your mates, blah, blah, blah. You'd be like, <coughs> fuck no, you. And no. sadly, that's going to go on. It's, uh, they're going off here. It's like when people, like I said, with these war crime acts, you know, okay, there's some like in the, German days with the Jews who were head of the camps that went too far but then you just get the average soldier yeah. who's like okay his top commander like say Goebbels or someone is standing there they've got a hundred Jewish people in a pit and there's like ten of them they say ready aim shoot them and then you try this guy for a war crime he's following orders it's like you should be able to try him for a war crime he's doing as bad as it is in his mind he's probably thinking fuck I shouldn't do this but if I don't do it they're going to kill me and I'm sure there's a lot of people in the American army, Australian or anything, that go to war and they've got orders to do it. They might not agree with it, but you've got to follow out these orders or it's treason or you're not following command and shit. So when they go after people like that and try them for war crimes when they're just following orders, I'm like, that's bullshit. And then the, for the, the trial hasn't even gone through yet and we had the general here in Australia and the prime minister already apologise. And I'm like, you're just making it look worse. Yeah, I'm also... It's more for me, like what? What? Why were we even over there? Mm-hmm. Like that? That's the weapons of mass destruction. Wasn't that's it? the um. That's the the big question, and and also the other part is these guys are the, the these these are the guys you call when the elite. You, you they're like the elite like no of the elite. Other, mm-hmm. Another uh, option. Mm-hmm. They've proved themselves around the world as as you know one mm-hmm. of the best. They do the jobs we don't even know about. Yeah, like, and, and unfortunately, I'm sure it's like we know of some jobs, but I'm sure there's jobs that our government or the American government's got the same that they go in and do that you'd never even hear of. Yeah, you'd yeah, never even yeah, hear of it. Yeah. And and just by the nature of it, th- these guys are a very very special man and, mm-hmm. and the, the, the it's a borderline mm-hmm. and you can never you can never draw that line and and, they and the thing th- is too imagine being in that situation like i said even that car coming towards you or even worse situations than that where like i said you're going to make a split decision yeah, in know, a second it's like us or them is this a terrorist or one of my friends went to vietnam and he said his mate got killed he was on watch he's turned to take a nap and 
his friend was on watch, he ended up killing the kid, he goes, six year old kid, he goes, I still see the kid when I shot him, but he walked up to his friend on watch, like he was chatting with him, shoved the fucking grenade, blew him up, so he shot the kid, and he's like, I still have nightmares about it, because, you know, can you imagine if you're just sitting there and you see that, you're like, oh, he's a kid, he's okay, yeah, I know, I know. it's like, you don't know anymore, so, it, to be put in that situation, like I said, you got a split second to make a decision that's you or them, and like I said, you don't know who the enemy is over there, they, you know, sadly the terrorists hide behind women, children, or the terrorists will get a woman to put a suicide vest on, and she's coming up to you walking down the road with a child, hey, I just want to cross the border, you know, or I'm carrying food and this and that, yeah, sure, come on through, as soon as they get close to you, boom, it's like, you know, it's crazy that you, you know, we shouldn't be, okay, if something major happened and shit, like, if they went around into a town and just started raping women like the yeah, old pirates, no, no, no. okay, but when it's a war situation and shit's going on, you shouldn't be second guessing these guys because, you know, it's war. Nothing's ever pretty in war as bad as it is. You're not gonna agree with everything, but I'm sure they're making the right decisions at the time that they feel is correct. Well, uh, as, be as best as you can make. And, and still, uh, like what gets me is that they're saying, oh, you treated this prisoner unfairly. Oh, you beat him up while he's handcuffed or you did this. Okay, shit happens, but yet, Look what they're doing. How many times do we see people getting their heads cut off? Yeah, people yeah. cut up, just slaughtering people for no yeah. reason at all. And they want to complain, oh, you treat us inhumanely? They're like, uh, did you see what your ISIS people are doing? I don't really call that grabbing homosexuals tied up and just throwing them off rooftops and shit yeah. like that. I'm like, yeah, really? I sh you shouldn't be one to talk about barbaric behavior. But like, again, it's war. Nothing's ever pretty in war. We're yeah. never going to agree with anything in war. It's never like, here, America and that, the police do something, they're under, under the yeah. thing. You know, we should have done that, you should have done it this way. Again, split second decision, yeah. me or him. If someone's coming out with a knife, I'm gonna shoot. Oh, you shouldn't have shot him. He has mental problems. Well, obviously, yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. gonna stand there and yeah. get stabbed. Yeah, no, I, I want to go. <laughs> I didn't have time to complete my yeah. diagnosis. <laughs> yeah, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hold on for a minute, face recognition. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, this is um Sergeant 627. Yeah, I got, um. Sam Smith, Sam Smith, can you look him up? Yeah, just check his, <sighs> check his hospital record, he has a knife, I just want to know how I'm to approach this. Is he sane, does he have any mental issues, is he on any medication? Oh, he's on medication, okay. Mm -hmm. He's been in and out a few times. Okay, guys, been in and out a few times, put your weapons away, put the tasers down, try talk to him, I don't know. Oh, he's got no medication, oh, oh nothing. He's just crazy, he must just be crazy. I get, shoot him! <laughs> it's, like, it's like, what are we going to do? We've got to get a background check before we fucking go after you? So I said, well, that happens so quick and they want to second judge these people. And what gets me is too, the ones that complain the most, the sitting home and out of police shouldn't have done this, or the military shouldn't have done that. If you're young enough, go join the military. Oh, go it. join the police. If you want to make a change, go be that change. Mm -hmm. Shut your mouth, go and join up and be that person that makes good. You, you go in there and you do it the best you can and try rally the troops and say, hey guys, there's a better way to do this. Let's do it. Otherwise, shut your mouth. <laughs> oh, look, you know, you know, you know, Sandra, the social worker from Newtown. That, did, you um, actually hear that, that, did you actually hear that they, in America, they want to actually get social workers to go, go out with the police. So in these situations, yeah. <laughs> and the police yeah. are like, they'll get yeah. killed. Yeah, <laughs> no, well, that's what, you know what? That the people that suggest that, I'd be going, okay, come with us tonight and just take him to the worst part of town. Mm -hmm. This guy's got a knife. He's on drugs. Fella, stand back. <laughs> Sarah's going in. I Good luck, Sarah. I guarantee that only go. That they wouldn't even last. Mm -hmm. I was going to say a, a night, but definitely a week. When they go to like some oh. some poor woman's getting belted up. Mm -hmm. They turn up. Um, Tony. Tony. Stop hitting Sarah for a minute. I need to talk to you. Tony, stop. Can you help me, guys? No, no, you talk to him. You go talk to him. We'll just sit back here. You go and chat to Tony, the abuse that we've come to this house 20 times already. You go talk to Tony. But the thing was, I actually watched the program. It's on YouTube, YouTube, if I can find it. This guy who was the head of Black, one of the Black Lives Matter people who said you're using brutality, these police actually took him to a facility and they said, okay, we're going to give you different scenarios yeah. of people coming at you with guns yeah, and knives. Yeah, 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 I saw that. Nine out of ten times, this guy pulled his gun yeah, and shot yeah, him. Yeah, I know, I know. He goes, oh, I didn't realise how bad this was, because this guy's just coming at him, he's like, 
Stir, sir, stop, don't come at me. It's just freeze and that. The guy keeps coming, when he gets close to the guy, he just goes bang, you're, yeah. you're dead. And another time he's near the back of a car, sir, come here, this and that. He's like, you know, the next thing, the cop gets close, he pulls the knife and stabs him. Yeah, nine out of ten times, he shot the person and he's like, oh, I didn't realise it's this. And he goes, yeah, he goes, you haven't got. I oh, know, well, that's yeah. the thing, like, <laughs> the minute the police stop shooting people, you're just, in America, they're just going to be going can you straight imagine, up to like, uh, Can you imagine, oh, the police can't shoot us anymore. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's... A, well, even here, remember, back in the old days, stop or we'll shoot, and they could actually shoot you in the leg or something, or try to, but now it's like, if you do that, you shoot them in the leg, they sue you. Oh, there was that one criminal, he didn't get shot by a cop, but he got shot by a homeowner, broke into his house. Did you actually see this politician in America... She was on YouTube, it's on there. This this was on YouTube, unbelievable. This politician said, she's trying to change the laws that if you're a homeowner or someone breaks into your house, you're not allowed to defend your house or family. What you should do is walk out the door and let them take what they want and have and have whatever they need. Take what they need. Yeah, did you see that? But but they're not allowed to do it to my place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you got to do this. I'm like, who the fuck's going to do that? Can I just get the kids before you start ransacking no, well, the place? You know what needs to No, you can't take the kids. I'm a pedophile. Yeah. I want to root before I go. No, no, you know what? Okay, needs... Sam's upstairs. Just go visit him. <laughs> who do you want, Sam or Sally? Sam's six, Sally's four. I'll take... Okay, I'll take Sam in. He's too old, is he? Go for it. That's like, what the fuck is wrong with people? No, well, what, what needs to happen there is... People need to rock up to that woman's house. Oh, yeah, and, and just go, go in. Form a line, go and look, we, you know, I, I need this. Could you imagine? She probably lives in a secure yeah, estate, yeah, no, no, security I guards. But, yeah, I would. Uh, who was that? What, what politician? Oh, she's got that big mansion. Okay. Yeah. Boom, kick the door in and see what happens. So, just go wait outside. Where, where's the good shit upstairs? Look, save me looking around. Where's your, like, grandmother's jewellery and stuff? Is it upstairs? Like, yeah. What's the combination to the safe? Thank you. No, but it's like, well, um, you know, I'm, I'm poor. I haven't got enough food to eat. Um, mm-hmm. Or, you know, I lost my job, so I need it. Well, that's yeah. what I said about these people with the immigration. Look, I'm all for immigration if it's done correctly. Yeah. Letting people in that you don't know their background or who they are, and these people go, oh, you should let them in. I said, okay, then every night when you go to sleep, do not lock your windows yeah. or doors. Leave your front door and open. Because there's probably homeless people out there that need a place to sleep, need a shower. They're looking for shelter on a rainy night or food. So leave your front doors open. When you go to bed with your kids upstairs, just let them come in. Yeah. You don't have to worry who they are. What, what, what's the worst that could happen? Just let them come into your house and take what they need because that's the good person you are. You want to let all these people into the country. You don't know who they are, where they've come from, what their background is. But So why, why do you lock your doors at night? Just let people in if you're so you know, caring and stuff like that, just let them come in. Maybe yeah. they just need to put their head down on the couch for a couple of hours or maybe they want to watch TV, have a shower, make a sandwich. It's all right. You just go to bed with your kids and you'll be safe. Don't worry about it. No, no, I think they did that to um, um, Nancy Pelosi, one of the Democrat ones mm-hmm. with, um, um, when they were talking about, you know, um, you know, deporting Mexicans or building mm-hmm. the wall or whatever. This guy rocked up to her place with um, a couple of Mexicans and just yeah. going, oh, you, know, you, you don't mind if they come and stay with you, do you? Yeah. Like they, these guys, um, you know, they want to come over here, start a bit. They want to work, can, yeah. Can you, can you just look after them? Like they just need a pl- place to, oh, no, no, not me, you know. Like. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and, like, yeah. and has a massive... Um, house and yard. and Has a massive house, mansion and... They could do yard work for her. Yeah, yeah. Earn their keep. Yeah. Just put a tent in the backyard for them. Win-win for everyone. Exactly. But, yeah, she didn't seem too keen, so... It's funny when they do that, isn't yeah. it? No, no, well, not me exactly. But it's like that thing when I was watching, not this election, but on YouTube, that person that was asking about the racist comments and stuff like that. He was just asking people about different things on what happened, and they didn't have a clue. But no, not us. And then they were saying, too how these people for, not the US election, but elections in general, when they say what they're going to do, they use it for a photo op, they go down to those poor areas, we're here to help you, and, that, and they're like, no, they're elected, we never see them. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. never come back, our schools are still shit, our hospitals are shit. It's like they come and say, they get their promises the world come election time, not, not this election, but you know, the Colombian election in Buenos Aires yeah, again, yeah, that's yeah, very yeah. bad one over there. And the elections in Nepal yeah. going on right now. The Sherpas, they promised the world, and then they don't even get a donkey yeah, to carry yeah. their stuff up Everest. 
Yeah, so, yeah, they're like, yeah, these people promise us all this stuff come election time, they come do photo ops, and then once they get in, we never see them for four years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, yeah, and then they talked about even, well, this is going back, we can probably mention Obama because it's way back. But yeah, they asked the black people about him. They go, oh, it was great. You know, we voted because we wanted the black man. And he goes, that was the only good thing. First black president. It was historic. But he didn't do shit all for us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every one of them. Didn't do nothing. Was hoping he was going to make a change, but he didn't make any changes for us black people. Oh, there's a good, um, once again, on YouTube. Why does this stuff get to stay on YouTube and we get the letter? No, this, uh, like, and you, you never hear about it, but a Democrat <laughs> wrote a, like, a real detailed book on him. Mm hmm and basically said, look, he was a really decent fella, um, had look all these that. principles and, and oh. I'll take, I'll take the lid off. <laughs> yeah. um, had all, um, um, you know, decent... Steel. Decent principles and stuff. Look at that, it's like me when I go into a cold pool. <laughs> <laughs> Water's a bit cold today. Woo, there's a girl on the beach. Oh, no, too bad. Yeah. Need my anchor. I hope you yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, a guy with long hair. Yeah. As a surfer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were like long hair. Yeah. Have you ever done that? Like, yeah. Long boy there, whatever. And then, oh, Jesus. Yeah. As a surfer. He looks, he's got a cute ass in the wetsuit. <laughs> ah, it's a fucking guy. <laughs> got me. Yeah, we broke up three years later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's a good surfer. <laughs> but no, um, I'll just. He did the book. Yeah, so this guy was a Democrat, mm -hmm. donated, whatever, did a book on him and just basically said, he goes, he was a decent fella to start out with. And the reason why he did it was because, um, you know, he thought that, you know, like you just said then, that he promised all these things mm -hmm. and he never did them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as, as he sort of climbed up the political ladder, you know, <laughs> he, he was willing to sacrifice his beliefs for power. Oh, have you actually, they did a thing, I saw it on, YouTube, where they're doing a thing on what he was worth before he come into oh, <laughs> to what he's oh, worth yeah. now. Oh. The money he's worth now, and the homes he's got, and where he lives and shit. And yeah, other, the people. You seen that one at Martha's Vineyard, the house there with yeah. all the land and. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, that's what um you can you can say Woo. you know the same about um Bill Clinton, like you know both had oh. um wage jobs. Mm. Like and same with Obama, and then yeah, like just uh, overnight they're um, multi, um, multi, multi millionaires. But yeah, there's there's one um, that like Hillary Clinton did a speech to bankers, mm -hmm. got paid like four hundred thousand dollars for it. They've never released the transcripts for it. But how is it right that um, you know? even though Bill was out of politics and she was still in it, mm -hmm. like how can he be going around giving speeches, getting money from, you know, questionable governments yeah. well, while she's... It, um, and companies. Of I'm, giving a, I'm giving a speech at this big company that's after, <laughs> after a government contract. No, it was more... But say, like I said, say Bill goes to give a speech at a big company that wants a government contract. It's, hey, Bill, you come speak for us. We'll pay you two million if we can... Can you get me just a phone call with Hillary? Yeah, oh, yeah. Because you know, that goes on. Here we go. Oh, yeah, I can probably get you a phone call with her. No, well, or a meeting even. Can I get a meeting with her? We'll pay you $2 million to come give a speech at this luncheon if you can just get me five minutes with your wife because I've got this great plan. <laughs> and then it gets to five minutes and all of a sudden this company that just paid you $2 million gets a billion-dollar contract. Wow. Um, that never happens, though. That never happens. That's just like a scenario. Now, what... One thing I heard that w what Trump did was he kicked out all the lobbyists. He wouldn't deal mm -hmm. with the lobbyists. But then they said it's that bad, the system is that bad, that he'd have, you know, obviously like a, a, a team of underlings working mm -hmm. for him. So you might just be like, um, you know, like working for a, a main guy and you, know, you might only be getting like a, a, a normal sort of salary. They were saying that people had come to these people and say, here's 500 grand, just ask him this. Or, mm -hmm. you know, things like, oh, can you see what he thinks about this? Like, that's mm -hmm. how bad it is that... They got this little proposal. Could yeah, you show him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what, it, like, mm -hmm. I guess people you know, should... I say, well, I say Bill Knitton did a speech somewhere. At the end of it, they gave him $2 million. Oh, By the way, 
had this little proposal here. Would you mind just showing such and such yeah. the, you know, the energy commissioner guy, don't you? I've got this new solar scheme thing. Can you just show him that? He was like, oh, sure, not a problem. I'll take it to him. Yeah. Hey, energy guy. Yeah, I just did a speech the other guy, and the guy Dan that runs it gave me this. What do you think of this? Oh, that's very good, isn't it? Well, that's what um, actually, do you want to get a um, do you want a coffee? Oh uh, yes, please. Um, that's what um, worry like the worrying thing about China. Like, what what do you, what do you, what do you think they're gonna do? Are they gonna build um, you know, f five aircraft carriers at you know two billion a pop or whatever they are mm -hmm. um all these other air force navy i know they're already building it up mm -hmm. but are they going to spend all that money to build up a military to take on america or would it be easier just to get in there and and pay you know, a hundred thousand here, two hundred thousand here, million here, whatever to all <laughs> low level. Well, did you see that guy in California, Newsom, whatever his name is, has been seeing that woman who's Chinese and she's been a spy. Oh, I, I don't think it was him. It was another guy. No, it's the California one, the California guy, the one that was after Trump forever. Um, oh, what's his name? He's from California anyway, but no, he's the Saul. one. Yeah, so, Saul. So, yeah, yeah, him, yeah, 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 yeah. The woman he's been seeing, and she even put 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 an infiltrator in his fucking, like the secretary or whoever, some intern. Yeah. And there, there's so many of them and he, he is, but he's the main guy that was always on TV about Trump with Russia yeah, and yeah, there's yeah. proof of Trump with Russia and yet the whole time he's been seeing and banging this Chinese spy and she even put an intern into his office who's a spy and fucking everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 let's, look, it's... it's what people don't realise is China Look at them now with Australia even, stopping oh. all these losing money. Well, the good thing is lobsters are cheap right now, so you can go get lobster and stuff. But are they cheap? Yeah, $20 at Coles and Woolies. They've actually put a limit of four on because people are buying them up. Are you serious? Yeah, they had to put a limit on because people are going crazy buying them. Big lobsters, 20 bucks. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was on the news. They had to put a limit. Because I was wondering, like, um, and for people that don't know, we'll explain it. What's tr Australia questioned um, China, China over the over, the, over the, uh, a, a recent illness that yeah, has been going sickness, around. Yeah, and China didn't like that. So what they've done is they've banned our exports of coal, beef, beef wine, barley. Yeah, and now I think seafoods as well, and all this other stuff. Yeah, so now yeah they've got such an abundance of lobsters that. They're like 20 bucks for the big lobsters and everyone's been going nuts because Christmas is coming up. So two days ago on the news, Coles and Woolies have had to put a limit of four per person. <laughs> well, that's what I was wondering because when they... I mean, our steak should get cheaper now, shouldn't well, it? Well, that's what I'm... You know, surely they're selling it... Our chops a, might become cheap. At a discounted rate and... and chops as cheap as chips. Would you know even how to... Um... But this is what I'm saying. Look at China. We've become so dependent on China. Yeah. We sell shit to them and then buy it back at five times the price and all this yeah. garbage. It's like, you know, people say, oh, you've got to worry about terrorists because terrorists, they sneak into your country. China just comes in, buys shit up. They've got yeah. the port up in Darwin. They come in and brought some of our big agricultural farms and shit. Yeah. They lease some of the other farms. They lease and own some of the water. It's like, imagine how many... Well, shit in Sydney here. How many Chinese students come in, like every year, and come in here and get jobs and stay here? You can't tell me out of all them, not one or two or three is a spy or infiltrating. So here we've got coming in. They're buying up everything. Let's just say this goes on for years and years and years, fifty years down the track. Now we have all these spies in the country. They own all the major businesses. We're in debt to them, and we've got to, you know. Our, Say they just stopped buying coal altogether, yeah. that would cripple Australia. Imagine all the coal mines, the truck drivers, the train drivers, the shipping yards yeah. and all this. So, so all, all China could do is go, okay, now's day's the day, we're going to pull the strings in and show you how much control we have, which they're almost doing now. Yeah. So imagine further down the track and all these people suddenly go, well, that's okay. And all of a sudden the power just goes off. Well, why'd that go off? Oh shit, China owns the electricity. China owns the wires. Yeah. So now... If we don't do as they say, they won't turn the power on, or they won't turn the water on. Yeah. Or they, like I said, how many of those big agricultural farms up in Australia, where the sugar is and all the fruit and vegetables, they lease them and own them. Imagine if they said, okay, well, we own these farms. 
we're not going to give you any food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like they just, they don't need, you know, they tried invasion, the Japanese. They figured, well, that didn't work. The invasion didn't work. Let's come in through the front door. The proper channels will come in and just buy stuff up and go into business and do this and do that. And before we know it, look now, with this sickness that came from somewhere, look at all the, how many industries, like even here when you're getting equipment, you know, because of everything from China shut down. Look how many. Yeah, no, no, no. Look, it's... look how we look. I think it was a big wake up call from Australia, America, that how much all these countries rely on China all of a sudden. It's like because we've just given them free reign. And have you seen like their armies and their militaries? Like they say, America is like the number one military power. I don't know. When I've seen them Chinese parades and shit and the way they march and all their missile trucks and shit like that, I think, oh. I don't know if America is the number one superpower, really. When you look at America, um, when you look at America and compared to China and what comes out of China and all the stuff they make from nearly every electronic good, I probably say comes from China. Does it phones, everything? Yeah, no, no. We, and how do we know that every phone they make, like the Apple iPhone 12, you know, they, they've got some fucking smart people over there. How do you know that these shit they haven't put a bugs in them or shit that goes in it so? Every phone in America, they could have some little microchip in there, so every message you send out goes somewhere. And it's like, okay, a lot of them's off. Just Sam sending dick pics to Sally. But then hold no. on, hold on a minute, ah. Matt. <laughs> but hold on a minute, hold on. Fuck, this is Biden's phone. This is Trump's phone. Hey, someone gave Trump the fucking iPhone 12, such and such. Yeah, we've got his, we've got all his messages. So I was like, we don't know what they put in them. They could be putting anything in them that records everything and sends it back to, wasn't it the thing with, what's that phone company, Huawei or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, there was something with those phones and shit. They Well, that's part of the problem that with the trade thing that we've we've put the stops on <laughs> Huawei. And, yeah, because yeah. they were saying there's something in the programs or the phones or something. I was like, you wouldn't know what they're doing. They could be having shit in your TV. While you're sitting there watching Pornhub on your TV, beating off, they're watching you through your fucking TV. They know what's going on. They know what every home has in it. It's like, we've become so reliant on technology, everything now. Oh, I've got a fridge that tells me when I need to go shopping, and i got this, and, oh, let's put in these home security cameras that I can see. When I'm away from home, I can see the cats and stuff, but who else can tap into that and yeah, see? Yeah, I know, oh, I know. Hey, psst, they're not home. No, well, that's what... Um... Everything's so digital now, and like I said... You can't tell me China. They've got some brainy people that can't tap into that. <laughs> I, I, I don't think China will ever be dumb enough to attack militarily, but... But if they did, I think they're pretty prepared. No, but you don't need to. Like, no. it, like, I think, you know... If China just said we're not... Say if China just said, you know what? Screw you all, America and Australia. No product we make now is coming to you. No washing machines, no TVs, cars phones, yeah. whatever you got, you're stuck with it. We're not going to send any parts either, so if the ship breaks down, no, well, whatever think, parts you have. <laughs> I mean, we are lucky in that they're super reliant on the rest of the world. They've, they've got to, you know, they need us to buy their stuff. Mm -hmm. But let's just say they make a deal with, look, China and Russia are pretty cosy. Let's just say they go to Russia and go, hey, well, you have gas and you have oil and you have fucking but, coal it's like we'll start dealing with russia and european countries and get this big imagine if russia and china joined together they'd be like Phew. no no but it's more what i'm worried about is what's happening in america imagine if if you know people are talking now remember about, this is just two silly guys having an opinion don't take it seriously yeah we just yeah <laughs> there's the civil war over there because uh -huh. it's like the country is so divided mm -hmm. um and it doesn't even have to be a civil war. It just has to be like a larger scale. It just scale. has to be divided, which it is. So, um, you know, we're relying on America for our de defense. And already, like, China's um, going to build a, a fishing um, mm -hmm. a fishing port in Papua New Guinea. Oh, yes. So they, they'll they have, like, Navy ships 200 clicks off the, um, the Australian mm -hmm. coast. They do something in Australia with one of their investments, and they don't like how we handle it. Oh, we've got to send our um, military in to protect our assets. America's mm -hmm. divided. They're not going to send anyone to... Um, We're um, too busy over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that's. We're too busy trying to free the slaves. Oh, we did that already, did we? What are we doing then? I don't know. So that that's, that's I guess, what... Um, but like I said, just how many businesses in Sydney that are probably owned by the Chinese? If they just said... And 
Imagine if, imagine if the Chinese just pulled a lot of their stocks out of the stock market or whatever. Yeah, and at this point, I'd like to make a distinction between Chinese people and Chinese communists. Mm -hmm. And governments. And Ch Chinese communists are dedicated on um, to, to furthering the Communist Party. Chinese people are the loveliest people. Mm -hmm. They've been in Australia since gold rush days. And they they're, make good sweet and sour pork yeah, and honey chicken. Mm. Um, my, my, my last, my, my dad's na last neighbours were Chinese. The, the Did they make any food for you? Mate, they, uh, he, he could, because he was a bit older, could not have wished for better neighbours. Mm -hmm. the, the, the family was lovely. Family, yeah, they are. And, and Very respectful. They're really Japanese and Chinese, a lot of them are respectful cultures. It's like, you know, because when you hear of like the atrocities that happened in the war with the Japanese people, you're like, oh my God, they're ruthless. Yeah. You talk to, I was talking to one guy, his father was a prisoner of war with him and he'd tell me about, he said his father never spoke, I mean, his great, -grand great grandfather never spoke about it. But when he did, it was just like, I mean, just total full on ruthlessness. But yeah, yet, yeah, yeah. Yet when you actually speak to Japanese people today and that they're like very respectful, they're very in their culture and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Even go back to the, as barbaric as some of the samurais were, they had great respect and yeah, followed yeah, the yeah. samurai code and shit like that. But yeah, but like you said, they're just bad apples in everything. Yeah, no, no, we'll look at some. Um, it's all um, about these people that want to control everything. Well, look at well, look what they do to their own people. If you're living in China and you try and stand up to the government, where did, where did Chang Li go? Oh, I don't know, he put a post on somewhere and said the government sucked and we've never seen him since. It's like, people just disappear in those countries and you can't do shit about it. They can just come and lock you up and throw you in a jail. That's it. Like here, you'd have all the rights, you can have lawyers and shit over in those countries. People don't realise that you try and say something against the... Well, say you work for a newspaper in China yeah. and you went against the government and you wrote a piece like they do in America. Could you imagine how long you would last? No, no. Well, They'd be um, knocking down your door, throwing you in jail, your family in jail. There's no... Um um, Australian journalists now in China. Yeah. They um the the ABC one. They got them out because they were getting visits from the um their, government. Yeah, their their you know secret police or whatever mm -hmm. the government officials. Because they weren't writing flattering stories. Or something. No, no, this is true. One one um one journalist goes um wrote a piece that Not was crit crit critical mm. or whatever got the message and then they've done the old um oh you've got a 14 year old kid you know the, the, you know you, you better keep an eye like keep an eye on him that sort mm -hmm. of thing man the guy they interviewed him when he got back to australia crapping himself mm -hmm. like that that's 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 the thing and if, even if you get back here i'm sure those people have people here that let's just say he works somewhere in sydney but yet he's still part of that communist party thing or mm -hmm. whoever Hey, you're in Sydney, aren't you? Yeah, well, this journalist just moved home. Can you go and... Well, to, to, to put it in perspective, Australia still had journalists in um, um, Germany when Hitler was... Mm -hmm. not, not obviously when they went to war, but that, that gives you an indication of what the, um, the Chinese Communist Party mm -hmm. is, is like and the... Um, and and how ruthless oh, yeah. they are and, and like i said you hear people just disappear no well those, those uyghur um, yeah. um oh. labor camps oh there's mm -hmm. a there's a bill in the in the you'll be making phones for us <laughs> in the u.s senate or something like that not going anywhere because you know your big companies like nike and whatever mm -hmm. they don't yeah. want to upset the the exactly. government and that's the thing too you get all these people to go on about slavery and stuff yeah, and yeah. even these famous sports stars yeah, that go on about yeah. black lives matter racism and slavery and they're sponsored by nike and some of these and they know that fucking yeah. child labor and the conditions that people are working in yeah making their nike shoes and clothing is just crazy it's like you're wearing clothing that's made by child labor slaves that are making your shoes that's, and you've got a 40 million dollar contract and you're going on about all this stuff. Thank well, you. Well, well, um, Linus brings up a good point with. Um, you do. With you know Lewis Hamilton, the. Oh uh, yeah. He's very. Formula One. He's very vocal about it, and um, but happy to go to China and um, and the the Gulf states in the um, Middle East. 
where they've got you know people working on construction sites from India and Philippines. Mm-hmm. They take their passport. They can't leave the country. They're working oh, in ter- yeah. terrible conditions. Um, mm-hmm. Way like you know like compared to what um, um, you know like very much on par, if not like a lot worse than conditions African American oh, yeah. or I don't, I don't like using that word. Like Americans. Yeah, Americans with tan skin. Um, additional melatonin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we do, with high levels of melatonin. Black Americans. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, did, yeah, I, don't know. Well, I watched a thing the other day where Candace Owen and this other guy, this black guy was talking saying about white privilege. And he says, what do you see when you look at me? And he goes, I see a young man, such and such. And people start laughing. What you don't see is black. He goes, why are you making it a black thing? Yeah. He goes, I see a young guy that's courageous enough to stand up and talk his opinion, who seems like a well-spoken guy. Oh, so you're being racist because you're not seeing his black. He's like... Why you got a label in black? He goes, yeah. do you know they did a thing? And the guy's like, well, our DNA is different stuff. He goes, no, it's not here. That's what he said. He goes, the melatonin or whatever in the skin is. But he goes, they actually did a thing where they got the DNA from a white person, a black person, and there's yeah. nothing in that DNA that you can determine who's black and who's white. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. If I see you, you can because of the melatonin thing in the skin. But from the DNA makeup and the DNA molecules, you can't tell who the black person or who the white person is. The DNA is the same. Yeah, yeah, and also too, it's like okay, well, if I say, um, okay, well, I, I'm not going to discriminate against you. I'm not. I'm. Mm. It's not a factor for me. Um, I don't know what other people factor in. Mm. I don't know you. Well, I got I got called racist because you know Kurt, who is like a brother to me. I met him the first day in America. He is black, but then I'll go places and talk about Kurt, and people go, "Well, what's Kurt?" Like, what do you mean, what's Kurt? I said, he's my friend, he's my brother, but what is he? What? I said, what do you mean? What, is he black, white, Hispanic? I said, well, he's black, but I don't see that. Oh, you don't see his color, so you're racist. You're denying it. I said, if I look at Kurt, I don't go, hey, there's black Kurt. I see Kurt the person, his character, his makeup, you know, it's just Kurt as a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't describe him as Kurt, this is, he's, he's black Kurt. Yeah, like yeah, Kurt, yeah. It's just a person to me. So he's tanned. But like if I had a friend that went to the beach every day and got super tanned, one day, wintertime, he's white. I don't say he's white, Fred. Yeah, Summertime yeah, yeah. now, or he's a super tan, Fred. I don't change his colour all of a sudden. So I was like, yeah, well, if you don't, well, what do you mean you're denying him because he's black? Said, it's Kurt. I see yeah, Kurt yeah. the person. If I go, okay, yeah, look at him. Okay, if you, want to, if you said what colour's Kurt's skin, I say, well, it's obviously black. But yeah, I can see he's black, but I don't see him as black yeah, Kurt. Yeah, I yeah. see him as fucking Kurt the person. Well, you're being racist. I'm like, fuck off. No, no, but also, too, <laughs> like, um, Say using um, um, that. There's a really good documentary about it um, called "Coming to America." <laughs> so yeah, and, um, um, Eddie, Murphy, Eddie Murphy. Eddie, Eddie Murphy was a, that was a good a, documentary. It was a like a black African wealthy prince, mm-hmm. and then you had black people in a. They both they both got the same, I guess, ancestry. Mm-hmm. But, like, what do you call like a like, yeah, that's where you can't say, oh, they're, they're, they're both black, because if you're saying they're black in America, they're black Americans, but he's a black African. Well, that's what I said. My friend that was born, not in South Africa, but in Africa, because his parents went over there and his grandparents were like missionaries and they worked there and stuff. And he was born in Africa, came to America, became a citizen, and on his form he puts down Caucasian. I said, why don't you put down African American? You have an African passport and an American yeah, passport. Yeah, now, that's it. Because I'm white. I said, well, it doesn't matter if you're white. Yeah. You were born in Africa. That's where you come from. Yeah, yeah, and now yeah. you're an American. They've made you an American citizen. So you are literally African American. Yeah, yeah. I can't do that because I'm white. Well, so, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, it's like, and then there's ones that live in America saying, I'm a queen, I'm a king. Well, if you're a king and a queen and you hate America so much, why don't you go rule your kingdom? Go back over yeah. there and tell them people in Africa that you're a queen and see how far what riches you get yeah, yeah. no no i think half you'll probably get raped and burnt <laughs> i think half the problem is like my theory is like everyone looks at their past or mm-hmm. whatever and glorifies it and thinks that you well, know it's like even this guy said he goes to this young kid that stood up he goes what is there today or anything he goes yeah we can talk about past it happened to a lot of people all races being conquered and slaves and that goes but today what is it that you can't do that I can do? 
we can do the same thing. We can get a job. You can go for a job the same place I can go Be, for a become job. Become president. Hmm. It's like the only thing stopping people today is their mentality and their fucking. Yeah. Oh, look. And generally, sadly, today, if you are black or you are gay or you're some sort of trans or whatever, you've actually got more rights because people are too scared not to give you a job or not to give you a go because they know that you're going to pull the card out of whatever card you're playing in from the deck. Yeah. Racism, sexism. Yeah, no, 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 I, I, I agree. Like, uh, it's, uh, it's like the white homo sapien male is an endangered species. Even now, did you see on Instagram, here's the funny thing, Chris Cormier's been posting some of the European contests that we were in, and now it's all blurred. Sensitive material. You have to click on it to see the video because it's um something masculinity. Toxic masculinity? Yes. Yes. Are you serious? Yeah, I think it's... I'll see if I can find it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'll look up Chris's page here. Yeah, it's like... And do they realise that there's lots of... Um, yeah, because they said... That have, um, they said that... Here it is. Here, look. <laughs> this is when... Oh, by the way, Kevin Leverone won. NASA was second. I was third. Paul Dillett was fourth. Chris Cormier was fifth and... No, Ronnie Coleman was fifth, Chris Coleman was sixth. Yeah, here, look. What's that on? Instagram. So they say in the... They're saying that guys now are being hurt and can't handle it because seeing masculine bodies and stuff is like hurting their psyche. So it says, sensitive content. This video may contain graphic or violent content. To see video... <laughs> It's just the top six of the... Oh, man. You... Oh, no, no, oh. No, no. Oh. What is it? Graphic or violent or... Yeah, uh... top six at the 97. Oh, bodybuilders going to war. <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it a bit of, um, um, like, clash of... Look, there... Oh, here we go. Look, there's the people that are doing. There's Lee Priest standing in the middle of Nasser and Kevin Leverone. Oh, no, 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 Is that hurting your masculinity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, 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 no, he's uh, getting aroused. <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah, look, you put up with that one and then another one. Look, it's all been blurred oh, out now. Oh, no. Wouldn't it be weird because you've been, like, flagged for something? No, no, because somebody else posted on there that they did the same thing. Yeah, because they were talking about it somewhere. I thought they couldn't possibly do that, but then... The more I looked at it, yeah, they said that they were doing it now because... But um, if you're going to go to YouTube and you're going to type in... Um... No, no, you, you, you've got to go to YouTube and type in... Um, no, no, don't even do it. If you type in naked yoga, you see, um, like, nudity. Like, yeah. boobs and... Hold on, let's see what... I'm just um, trying to... I wonder if you can go... Is it doing good? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that, that could be, um, we'll get, we'll get Matt, Matt's, um, that could be Matt's mission to find a slug on, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no worries, I under, under, under our, um, under our YouTube thing that we put up, we have Unreal, goodbye free speech, sheeple, we're living in a sick world, YouTube, communism, all about being a good sheep, you mustn't be allowed to think or speak your mind, you guys should appeal. No, we, we didn't appeal. wouldn't have the sense of people if there wasn't anything to hide. Rumble. Censorship is real. Mainstream media, social media, you cannot have an opinion. Rogan, Rogan jumping ship. YouTube is dying. They seem to be censoring Officer Tatum. Yes, they are as well. Should be allowed to have a joke. If anybody used YouTube have no revenue, then who the fuck do they think they are? Freedom of speech. Whole special media is run by Bill Gates and the who, blah, blah, blah. Freedom of speech is useless. What do you guys expect? It's owned by Google. YouTube are the tube jokers. What the fuck? Oh yeah, look at all the fucking, for fuck's sake, what the letters. But they'll let people give fitness and diet advice with zero clue. No, well, um, with, with that with that bodybuilding one, like that's bizarre, because like say, um, like bodybuilding is like a non-violent sport like if anything you know like well, someone just said this I, I can't mention it but someone goes hey lee i just saw a leaked french document they say that the they say that this but not that one yeah like um not that one has mutated in feb 21 and and regarding there'll be a lockdown in april Military is to be deployed July 2021. 
care to share I want to see it send it to me hmm. no. DM me yes people are asking yeah, but there's quite a few